always been a believer in the fact that the best companies' reputations are built not when things go right for their customers, but when things go wrong. Welcome back to the Idea Supply Chain, where we take a look at where ideas come from and what makes them valuable. So, thinking about this a lot, because last week I had a god-awful experience with a rental car company. So, long story short, driving the rental car, driving a buddy to the airport, and... The car breaks down. Actually, it overheats. Pull it over. Says to check the fans. We do that. Seems like it cools off. Start driving. Overheats almost immediately. Pull off an exit. And car shuts down. I manage to pull over to the side of the road. Near an elementary school. And... Car's not working. So, let's call the roadside support. Perfect. Get on the phone with him. They say, all right on the phone with them about 25-30 minutes and they say all right tow trucks on the way should be there in about 90 minutes all right well that was kind of pushing it for my friend's uh airport check-in time so went ahead and got him an uber put him on his way out a bit of money for that definitely not cheap driving uh you know, 30 miles to the airport via Uber, but it worked, and I sat by the side of the road. And so I was there for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, 120 minutes. About two and a half hours in, I gave him a call and I said, hey, where's this tow truck you promised? I said, oh, let me talk to the tow company. And so, overall, on the phone for 45 minutes, I had to wait forever to even connect to someone, and then wait for them to connect to the tow truck company. And they said, oh, looks like it's probably still going to be like another three or four hours. At that point, I was very close to snapping. I am normally an easygoing guy. I don't get bent out of shape about most things. I'm honestly probably too patient. I give people benefit of the doubt. Turns out, after being on the side of the road for two and a half, three hours, and uh, seeing no end to this hellish journey in sight that, that's about when I start to snap and so I didn't snap at the people snapped internally not externally I believe that the systems that we have people in are terrible and um, honestly I, I don't blame the people I blame the systems um, and in this case, the company. The company is the system in which these individuals operate. So, I got another Uber. Another half hour, 45 minutes in, standing in line. And so, one of the things I had to do was jot down a number that was super important. Of course, I typed it on my phone. And then... After being on the phone for an hour trying to figure out the status of the rental car tow truck, my phone was very close to dying. I had a, just enough battery to order the Uber, and I turned the phone off and was like, okay, gotta wait. Get to the airport, get in line, in the line for the rental car company, and my phone dies. Of course, I don't have the code I need. Go up to the guy and I say, hey, can, is, can we do this without the code? No, I need the code. I need the code. Okay, cool. Fine. Go buy a wonderfully overpriced charger at the airport gift shop and sit down to charge my phone for just enough to get this damn number off of it. And then they go back in line. It's another 20 minutes or so, all told. And I get the other guy at the, uh, at the counter. And he apparently has no idea how the system works. So the first guy had been able to like pull up my information and just needed the number. Second guy didn't know what to do with the number. 
And so he makes a comment. Well, you know, people sometimes try to just uh, scam us. I'm not saying you're doing that. I'm like, well, you kind of just said I'm doing that because you're saying you can't find the record. And then some people try to scam you. I'm not feeling that. I've been on the side of the road for multiple hours. I'm getting pissed off. I said, okay, well, you, your guy over there had no problem with this. Like, it's in there somewhere. And he just kind of stares at me for a bit. Can we bring him over here? Can we ask him? Like, and so finally, he brings him over here to the other computer, pulls the record right up, and eventually, they manage to get me a replacement car. Now, at this point, the trip that was supposed to take two hours just round trip drop off it's now up to like over eight hours and yeah to give you an idea uh my smartwatch has a stress tracker normally i'm not particularly stressed i don't worry about it like my average is typically all the way in the green all the way to the left i'm pretty chill while i was waiting in line I did a stress measurement, and it was all the way uh, in the red to the end, uh, and it just said breathe, which was great advice. Uh, I was certainly trying to breathe. But now the question is, what does Thrifty Car Rental do? Do they make it right? Do they fight me on anything? Do they shoot the middle and at least do a minimal reimbursement on the one Uber ride? I don't know. I request out to the company. Quite frankly, based on my dealings so far, I'm not expecting much. But this is the opportunity for their company to change that impression I have. The one thing that never happened in any of the like in-person interactions at the rental counter, nobody ever apologized, which I, I get it. It's not something that really makes any actual difference, but I will say the, the, the phone operators, when I talk to them, Hey, I'm sorry you're going through that. That little touch of humanity, does go a long way. I noticed its absence when dealing with people in person. But now, I just am curious to see what the company does. Because frankly, it was a god-awful experience, and unless they really go out of their way to make this right, I'm probably never going to rent with Thrifty again, and I'm going to recommend everybody I know to not, rec not rent with them again. Will that matter? Eh, probably not. They're a big enough company. But it's their chance to make things right, and if you're a business owner, your reputation is built off of what you do when things go wrong. Make sure you see the person. Show empathy for what they're going through. Do whatever you can to make it right. And that is your opportunity to build a super strong relationship with somebody who had a bad experience while doing something with your company. Most companies don't do that anymore. The ones who do succeed way more than the ones who don't. And this is only going to be doubly and triply true as companies start getting rid of humans in favor of AI systems that don't have empathy, that don't see the people going through the issues. That's your opportunity right there. If you're looking to build a company, Focus on the people, because that's where all of the other large companies are going to end up missing out as they're trying to minimize costs and maximize profits. 
You focus on the people. That's the key to success. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.